Welcome back to the show, everybody. So listen, we have all been experiencing the immediate impacts of climate change. But what if we look a few decades down the line at our climate future? Well, that's exactly what our next guest did. Yes, and in a new climate change report from McLean's, she gives Canadians an idea of what our country will look like in the year 2060. And she's here to walk us through some of her findings. And Shabata Castleman, welcome to The Social. Good to have Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so Anne, I'm going to start off with this first question because this report paints a picture of Canada's climate future, but it specifically zeroes in on the year 2060. Why that year specifically? The experts are zoning in on the fact that our most likely trajectory or pathway and our most likely future is that by 2060, the world will reach two degrees of warming relative to pre-industrial levels. I want to preface this by saying this is if we continue as we are right now. And I think it's very clear that we can do better than we're doing right now. Yeah. 2060s also, it's not that far off. And I really wanted to pick a future date that readers, when they were delving into all these scientific projections, that they could really sort of cast themselves into that future and almost imagine themselves experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's sort of what will help motivate support for climate action and essentially a drive to stave off this future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your report uh, in it, you write, a hotter Canada will be a poorer Canada. Okay, what does that mean and what is this going to cost us? So the bottom dollar, there are projections of this, and they're very large. Later this century, Canada is looking at climate impacts that will be costing us at least $100 billion a year. Wow. The Parliamentary Budget Office is forecasting essentially 5% of our GDP will be drained by climate impacts later this century. To put that in perspective, the first year of the pandemic, which was awful, we were on lockdown and staying in our bubbles. Mm -hmm. I mean, the economy tanked. That was a 5% hit on our annual GDP. And so we are looking at that cost every year, each and every year. However, that it doesn't necessarily need to be that expensive of a bill if we're clear eyed about adapting our infrastructure better, about putting in sort of the social health supports, um, and of course, about reducing our emissions to slow down and halt the warming. It's not gonna cost that much. Okay. All right, so Anne, in your report, you write about climate change will significantly impact Canada's sense of national identity. Explain how mm. so. There are a couple parts to this. One part is just simply the icons of Canada, like maple syrup, hockey. I mean, you look at projections of backyard ice rinks, mm -hmm. and on our current level of warming, in another 50 years, Southern Ontario and Southern Quebec, most winters will not be cold enough for long enough for people to put in the effort to make a backyard ice rink. So that's a really big part of our national identity that is being endangered. Maple syrup production as well, the sugar maple forest, I mean, it's a tree, it's very sensitive to growing conditions and the climate. And so producers in Quebec are already casting forward to think about, okay, which forest do we need to secure where we can produce maple syrup in the future? Um, as well, though, I think Canadians like to think of ourselves sort of as like the nice guy on the global stage. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, on climate, we are definitely part of the problem and not part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And so I think as climate action continues, especially in Europe and in other countries that are bringing their emissions down quite successfully, as Canada is slow on that, mm -hmm. I think our international reputation is going to take a hit. And I think that's hard for us because up until now, we've sort of been like the nice girl on the block or the nice guy on the block. Um, and yeah, I think we can do better on that as well, of course. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. You also raised some pretty major uh, red flags about the mental health toll that climate change is having um, on Canadians and on Canadian youth mm -hmm. specifically. So what concerns you most about that? And that's not something I think a lot of people have top of mind. No, and I didn't have it top of mind when I entered into reporting this. And I'll say I spent six months researching this, so I, I delved really deep to sort of get a, the clearest picture that the experts could provide me about what's in store. And one thing that many of them flagged was the mental health. 
essentially, if you're someone graduating out of high school, you're 18, mm -hmm. you're looking ahead at your future, and you see a country and a nation that isn't investing in your future mm -hmm. by cutting its carbon emissions and by enacting better climate resilience policy, of course you're gonna start to feel disengaged, disinterested, hopeless, you will probably feel anxiety and climate stress. Your mental health might take a hit. And, you know, this isn't some teen angst that these youth are feeling. This is a very fundamental, like, what about my future? Why is no one investing in my future? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think most Canadians really realize the impact of an entire swath of young Canadians growing up feeling pessimistic about their future. That is not something that we have experienced as a country before. Mm. And I will say in countries that have stronger climate action, the youth report lower levels of climate anxiety and climate stress. And so if we start to get better on reducing our emissions and having better climate policy that's showing better results, we'll see that reflected in the hope that these younger generations will have. And these are the generations that are gonna be leading the country in another 30 years. Like we want that, we want to sort of give them all that they can be, mm -hmm. to be all that they can yeah. rather than pessimistic. Yeah, and be hopeful. You pretty much took a, we, we don't have a lot of time, but I wanna ask you this last question. You pretty much took a time machine and went f into the future and things look pretty bleak. And I know that must have taken a, a toll on your mental health as well, but I understand you have a philosophy to kind of take a different lens and take a, take a different look at it. What, what is that philosophy? Essentially, it was a half glass full, half glass empty moment. I mean, these climate impacts are very serious yeah. and they are frightening, but at the same time, the glass is half full. We are seeing gains in renewable energy rollout unlike we have ever seen before. And so our mission now is to stop the climate from getting worse, and people mm -hmm. are taking the steps to do that, and I know we can too. I wanna to remind everybody, you can read Anne's full report in McLean's. It is available online right now, and thank you for all this You're work so that you have done. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.